Oh, and this is this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com, and these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is going to be on beta blockers and the six Bs. And on this sticky note that's found on nursingcamp.com, Pinterest, and Facebook, you can, where you can download it. You can find me on social media, Nursing Camp, or download on nursingcamp.com. Okay, let's nurse on. These are for my cardiac A B C. D and E's. This is the second portion of that previous lecture where I talk about um, cardiac medications. And in those cardiac medications, I do order a priority. And order of priority is based on this A, B, C, C, D, E. Well, it's the second in line, and that's the beta blockers. And that's what we're going to talk about today, because that's the most acute of this of these um, medications. Beta blockers are very interesting because they give for hypertension, anxiety, and dysrhythmias, and mainly for CHF symptoms, and we we question those these, these medications because there's six Bs of beta blockers, and those are six things that we look at when we're looking at these beta blockers. All right, so let's get into this. So the first thing we're going to look at is when you're giving a beta blocker, um, there's secondary monitoring that we must do. And that secondary monitoring is based on these six Bs. And it's beta 1 and beta 2. And in this sticky note over here, I cover that there is a distinct difference between beta 1 and beta 2. Beta 1, you think of one heart. Okay, so you have one heart, and that's beta 1. So if you're blocking this mechanism, you're going to slow down the heart rate. So by slowing down the heart rate, that gives us another B. And what I mean by that is we monitor that patient for bradycardia. So, and the reason we monitor for bradycardia is because this beta blocker is going to slow down the heart. And that's more specific. If it's just a beta 1, like metoprolol, a tenolol, metoprolol succinate, is going to cause decreased heart rate, specifically because it's only beta 1. There's also, um, it's going to affect the blood pressure. And that's our second B. So we monitor the blood pressure when patients are on beta blockers because of their risk for hypotension. And we generally will hold if the systolic is less than 90%. They'll follow your hospital policy because that might be different per facility that you work at. Um, blood pressure should be monitored and heart rate apical pulse should be monitored prior to administration. The next thing is we're going to talk about is beta 2. And beta 2 is there's two lungs in the body, okay? So that means beta 2. So if you're blocking it, you are going to be affecting these lungs. And they show up in the form of uh, bronchoconstriction. And the reason they, they do that is they block the smooth muscle. And what happens is, is that they get wheezes. And that changing of breathing um, with beta blockers is, 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 should be assessed and questioned requiring interventions. So patients who are on uh, COPD, who are COPD, whether it's emphysema, bronchitis, or asthma, should all be questioned on beta blockers because of this beta 2 principle. So they would be more likely to be put on the, just a beta 1. So secondary for NCLEX is, is that you generally will question a patient who's on a beta blocker. The next thing is um, blood glucose. Now, blood glucose is because of mainly here, sugar pan. And I call it the sugar plan. And propanolol is specific to the blood sugar. And what happens is, is that with, with a patient who has uh, beta blockers, and it's non-selective, which means that it affects both of these, beta 1 and beta 2, um, what we do is, is that we, um, we would monitor their blood sugar. Because a patient who's uh, hypoglycemic will be diaphoretic and um, clammy and pale. That's the same as bradycardia and low blood pressure. So the principle is, is like, is it the beta blocker or is it the blood glucose? So the uh, question is, is that the patient who's on a beta blocker will have mass symptoms of hypoglycemia. So you will not know if it's hypoglycemia or the beta blocker being caused. So those patients will be questioned and evaluated and assessed. Just like COPD. If a patient who has COPD gets a beta blocker, 
um, if they start to have wheezes, is it the COPD or the beta blocker? So that means that that's why we question those medications and we assess appropriately when we're looking at them. The next thing is, is that we're looking at beta blockers is <clears throat> the interaction with um, other medications. And what I mean by that is, is that beta blockers are specific in, you know, the A, B, C, C, D. In the previous lecture, I talked about beta blockers being here with calcium channel blockers. And, and what those are is, is that they're going to affect beta blockers. So like a calcium channel blocker like diltiazem, when I talk about another lecture, diltiazem or verapamil affect heart rate and it'll decrease the heart rate. And that's problematic because, again, if you're giving somebody who's a beta-1 blocker and they're on a calcium channel blocker like diltiazem or verapamil um, and the heart rate starts to go down or their blood pressure goes down, which one is it? Is it the beta blocker or is it the calcium channel blocker? That's problematic, requiring some sort of assessment. As with all medications with cardio, uh, cardiovascular medications and beta blockers, we don't abruptly stop these medications, and um, we generally will will um, will continue to assess for those six Bs of uh, beta blockers. So let's talk about it, A whales. So in A whales, when we assess our our medications, this is a mnemonic that I use to evaluate what I might have to. Uh, further assess. So the first thing is, is, is it acute or is it chronic? Well, it's mainly acute. It's acute medication because it requires all this assessment. How does it work? Well, it works on beta 1 and beta 2, um, depending selective. And that will either block it or slow it down. Um, when do we hold this medication? We hold it when there is a systolic less than 90 or apical heart rate less than 60. If they have wheezes or if they have... Um, masking blood glucose. What's the assessment of it? Apical heart rate, we hold for less than 60, and we assess lung sounds, and we assess for wheezes, and any other complications. Um, L, any labs associated with it? Not really. Um, eating, does it affect eating or anything like that? Not necessarily. Um, doesn't really stand out. So what does stand out? S. What stands out is the six Bs of beta blockers. Their interaction with the wheezes or COPD and also diabetics. So we have to question those medications when those patients have those uh, uh, put on beta blockers. Well, my name's Camp and this is Nursing Camp with um, nursingcamp.com where I'm covering egg clocks and, and cardiac uh, one note at a time. You can follow me on social media. Uh, Pinterest, uh, in Instagram, and I have products on Etsy, which are my study notes that you can just buy if you don't want to print them out yourself. Um, that's it. We'll see you next time, and nurse on.